Hi everyone! Today we build this cool interactive wardrobe. We'll set up clickable options to change shelves and doors. And I'll also show how to create a drag interaction for the sliding door. We'll cover preparing your illustration, creating states of options on timelines, setting up the logic in the state machine and making it interactive with listeners. First, we need to get our illustration ready in Rive. I have a root group for the whole wardrobe containing a door group with left and right doors, an inner group with left and right shelves, and main wardrobe elements like frames and top. I organized left door and right door inside the root doors group for easy visibility control. The right door is placed above the left door, so it can slide over it. For the right door's movement, I create a transparent rectangle and name it Hitbox and put to the right door root group. Hitbox an invisible area that helps us detect interaction. Both the right door and Hitbox share the same origin point for easier or constrained positioning later. I create tabs on the right side for users to switch between shelf and door options. For this, use layouts to keep this responsive. Ok, now I hide a group with door to set up bonds. Bonds let me deform shelves and move multiple elements together easily. Think of them like a skeleton for your illustration. Our goal is to switch between options with two and four shelves. I prepare four shelves first and then create the two shelves options on the timeline. For the top right shelf, create one and name it right top. This one control up down position. I want the top shelves to show more surface when they move down for the two shelf option, creating the effect of a slight perspective shift. For this, I need back bone position it at the back edge, front bone position it at the front edge. Then I bind the shelf surface to back and front bones and set values. For back vertices, I set 100 back bone. For front vertices, I set 100 front bone. The side shapes will move with the main right bone. We don't need to bind it. Then I put a shelf with bones and plant directly to the right top bone. When I move the right bone, the whole shelf moves. Moving the back bone changes the perspective of the top surface. I repeat this for all shelves. For lower shelves, I move backbone up slightly to show more surface. Alright, illustration is prepared. Now we go to animate mode. I plan to create separate timelines for all options and top states. For shelf option, I create a timeline named it Shelves 4. This timeline shows the state where we see 4 shelves. Since I already prepared it, I just need to key the properties I plan to change for the second option. Y position for right and left top shelf bonds, Y position for back bonds of top shelf, opacity 100 for right and left lower shelf bone. Then duplicate the timeline for shelves 2 and modify it. Opacity to 0 for lower shelf bonds to hide it. Move top shelf bonds to the center of the overdrop and move back bonds slightly up. And the same logic applies to the doors. Create a new timeline and call it Door Snow. This will be the default option with the doors hider. Set the doors root group opacity to zero. Duplicate the timeline and rename it to Doors Yes. And set opacity back to 100. Easy. Lastly, I want to key the selected and unselected tab states. I create a new timeline and name it Tab 2 Active. Select the background shape of the two shells tab. Key its fill opacity to 100 to look active. For the four shells tab, I key opacity to 0 to look inactive. Duplicate the timeline and rename it. Make the four shells tab background active and the two shells tab background inactive. I repeat this entire process for the doors tab, with my timelines named doors no and doors yes. We have all our timelines. Now let's connect them using the state machine. Go to the state machine. 
I use inputs to switch our options and to assign them as conditions for the transitions that relate to them. In the input panel, click plus button and create a two numbers inputs. Name each shelves and doors. This will control the door and shelf state. I start with shelf options, drag both into the state machine. For the default state, I use a timeline with the two shelf option. Draw a transition with arrows in both directions. Select the transition going from first timeline to the second. In the inspector panel on the right, find conditions. Click plus, select shelf's input and enter the value 1. This means only go from the first to second timeline if the shelf's input equal 1. Select the transition going from second timeline back to first and add a condition. Shells equal 0. Now let's make transition smooth. In the inspector, find duration and set it to something like 200 milliseconds. Change the interpolation from liner to cubic for nicer easing effect. I repeat the same logic for the shelves, tops and use the shelves input for it. Bring timeline with tops to a state machine, create transition between them, set the shelves input and use the same values as I did for the shelf options. Since the timeline with two shelves is the default, I set 1 for the transition to the second timeline and 0 for the transition going back when the top with two shelves is in the active state. Transition for both the shelf timelines and the top timelines must use the same shelf input and condition values 0 and 1 to keep them synchronized. Set the duration and interpolation for these transitions too. You can skip setting duration here if you prefer to have top transition instant. Let's test. Play state machine. In the input section, I type our values 1 and 0, and the animation works well. Nice! To create transitions for timeline with door option and top states, I follow the same process using the door input. I then set values in the conditions and adjust the duration and interpolation. Now it works when we change inputs manually, but let's control it by clicking on the top. For this we use listeners. They wait for interactions like clicks or hover on targets and then perform an action like changing our input values. For creating listeners, I select the two shelf tab, go to the listeners panel and click the plus button. This creates a listener with the select tab automatically set as the target. Then I configure listeners in the inspector. Target should already be set to our two shelf tab. Listener action, the default is pointer enter. Change this to click or pointer down. Clicks usually requires a down and up action with the target area. Set input action. Click the plus button under actions. Choose set input. Select shelves and make sure the value is set to zero. This matches the value we used in the state machine transition to go to the two shelf timeline. I repeat for the four shelves top. Only when choose the shelf's input, I set the value to 1 to match the transition condition to go to the 4 shelf timeline. And I apply the same logic for the listeners for doors tab. Doors no, listeners has doors input with value 0. Door yes, listeners has value 1. That's it. We connected our clickable tabs directly to the state machine inputs. I place the state machine to test it and it works. I can switch for drop options by clicking on the tab. Alright, our wardrobe option work great with clicks. Now let's make the right door slide when the user drag it. To focus on this dragging interaction, I temporarily disable the layer in state machines that control the doors. For this part, we'll assume the doors are visible. I'll use a combination of constraints, boolean, inputs, listeners and a dedicated hitbox for this. The hitbox will detect interactions. I want to make the right door follow the hitbox. 
Select right door group, find constraints and click the plus button. Choose translation. A translation constraint lets copy the position of the target. In the constraint settings, click the target and select the hitbox. Leave the strange at 100 and keep other settings as default. Now, wherever the hitbox moves, the right door group will move exactly with it. We need a way to notify the state machine when the drag starts and ends. I use a boolean input for this, which can hold two values – true dragging or false not dragging. In input section, I click plus and choose boolean. Rename it to is dragging. Next, I want to create timelines to control the hitbox active state. I create a new timeline, name it active, select the hitbox, key its scale X and Y properties to 100, its normal size. Duplicate this timeline, rename it inactive. On this timeline, change scale X and Y values to zero. I bring the timelines with the hitbox in state machine, with the default set to the inactive state. I create transition between them. Set the is dragging boolean and assign values to each transition. For the active timeline, I use true and for inactive, false. These timelines activate the hitbox for dragging. Now let's set up the listeners that make the dragging happen. We need three listeners working together. I create listener 1 for starting dragging. I select the right door group, go to the listeners and create it. Name it detecting 1. Target should be the right door group. Listener action change it to pointer down. This happens when the user click or press down. Select its dragging input and set its value to true. Listener 2 track movement. Select the hitbox shape and create new listener. Name is tracking. Target hitbox. Listener action change it to pointer move. This triggers continuously as the pointer moves over the target. Click plus near action, choose align target and choose hitbox. Listener tree stop dragging. Select the hitbox again and create new listener. Name it detecting 2. Target hitbox. Change it to pointer up for action. This happens when the user release the click or lift their finger. Set is dragging boolean input and set its value to false. Let's try it. Play the state machine. The door is moving. Right now it can go anywhere, but the basic drag works. Finally, we need to restrict the door's movement so it only slides horizontally within the wardrobe frame. Since the door is constrained to follow the hitbox, we need to apply the movement limits directly to the hitbox. Select the hitbox. Under constraints, click plus and add translation constraint. This time we are not target anything, we are using the constraints to limit the hitbox own position. By default, the min and max values are related to the whole artboard. Our hitbox is inside another group, is positioned the zero origin of the group, not all artboard. Let's change this to local. Now the min and max values will be relative to the hitbox's parents group's origin. Next, I start with Y position. I want to lock vertical movement. The hitbox current Y position in local space is zero. Set min and max for Y to zero. This prevents any up and down movement. X position. We need to define the horizontal sliding range. The closed position is zero in local space and the fully open position is minus 247. I set these values min x to minus 347 and max x to zero. Adjust these min and max values based on the actual coordinates in your animation. Okay, I make state machine layers are now enabled. Play the state machine, choose option with doors and drag the right door. It should now slide smoothly left and right, but stop at the limits we defined. And it shouldn't move vertically. Perfect! And there you have it. An interactive art drop built entirely in Rive using timelines for states, the state machine for logic, 
inputs for control, and listeners for user interaction. Feel free to explore interaction with clicking and dragging in your own project. Thank you.